YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the basics of Figma and how to use Figma. And I'll be doing this in, this, in my series of how to use Figma for basics. We'll go through learning what Figma is as a tool and how to use that tool to create wireframe. We're going to use Figma to create a mini project. We're going to create a live project with Figma. Now I know that there's always a design process to your design, but I'm not going to focus on more of that. I know there's research to UX design, but I just want to focus more on how to use Figma as a tool and how to get it to create a basic you know, landing page or an app within Figma. So we're going to start with learning a few basic tools within Figma or few basic important tools within Figma. We're going to learn few plugins here and there that assist me within my work. We're going to learn grids, spacing systems and all of that. So without further ado, let's get started with Figma. So if you have a, a basic Figma file, the first thing to do, or the first thing I do is I rename my Figma project. So for example, let's call this Figma basic one. Once you have that, um, there is a Figma menu to your top left hand side. Um, in this menu, you'd have back to your files, click action file, edit view, object, text, arrange, ve vector, plugins, preference, libraries, and you can get the desktop app or even help. Although I personally do not have the desktop app and I don't use it as much. Sorry, I do have it, but I don't use that much. I'll just like to go over the web. And the reason why I, I like the web is because it's a little bit more easier and convenient for me, right? So after the menu, the Figma menu, we have another tool called the move tool. With the move tool, you can use it to move objects from one place to another, or you can use it to select objects. So for example, if you have a rectangle here, you can use the move tool to move the rectangle from here to here. Or if you have two rectangles, you can use that move tool to select both or move them from one place to another. And if you also could see there is the point where you could use that move tool to reduce the size of your object and increase the shape and size of it. And with this, before we go deep into all other tools, a few other tools that I'd like to talk about, but I'll talk about it with time, um, is I want you to understand the concept of design, right? And design is made up of only four things. It's made up of square, a cycle, a, a text, and colors. So if you really think about it, right, this is what the whole design is made up of, right? But everyone has or have their own preference on how they design with or what they design for. But every design has a rectangle, a cycle, a color, and a text. So for example, if we were to create this share button, right, in Figma, there are th three things we need to consider. We need to consider the shape, the text on it, and then the colors that they all circle in, right? So if we take this, for example, rectangle button, and we're to shape it into looking like what we have on the share button, the only thing we need to do is to bring, is to bring this blue color into our work, right? And then have the text where it says what? Share. That's all. We've pretty much have the basic button that we have up there, 
right? So that's just the basics of design, right? Even if you want to have, let's say, a picture within your box, or you want to create a box and create a picture, that picture has to come with a layer of a box, rectangle, or a cycle. The way you shape it determines the outcome of your design, if that makes sense. So outside of that, we also have the scale tool, right? And for, with this, you use it to scale your object within your design. So let's say, for example, you, this chair is a little bit stubborn, and if you want to scale it from down to bottom without really putting in the figure of the size here, you could really use the scale button to scale it from up to down, right? So we also have another tool, and this is one of the most important tools in Figma is called the frame tool, right? So the frame acts as a group, but like a group on steroids, right? So you could have um all of the tools within it. So it, it performs like a rectangle, but on steroids. So you could do all actions within it, and it's also like a group. So for example, I could take this, to and put it in here and the thing is you might say oh hey but why is it blocking you said it's a group and when you group something it kind of like holds this together why does this crops things for me but yeah it also has a side to it which is the clip content right so the clip content is used to clip the specific content you have and i would say that you know frames perform a lot more action than groups and i definitely have used a lot of frames than groups within my Figma files, right? Especially with the auto layer. What auto layer does is it sits on a frame actually, but it helps your work, it helps tidy your work and make it a lot more easier, right? So um, if we look under this, then there is a slice tool. So this slice tool, what I actually use it for is just to take exports, right? So if let's say for example, um, we want to create a profile picture for people, right? So let's say an example, we have a huge frame and this right now, I want to export it individually. So let's say I make a duplicate of this and I want to change the color of this to, let's say, um, yellow or something, right? And I want to take the pictures individually or I want to export it individually, right? And I use my slice tool to kind of like slice or dice up these pages based on how I want it. So these pages will just have the basic properties that you could take screen grabs or pictures of this and we can export it ind independently instead of saying that we have to export this entire frame. And this will come in handy when I'm trying to export this whole project to our social media, if that makes sense. So let's go to the next tool. The next tool is the rectangle tool, right? So this is used to create rectangle or, you know, you know, whatsoever shape you want it to be, but in form of a, a rectangle or um, what's this other tool called? Yeah, yeah, it's just a basic rectangle. And then when you look onto your right hand side, there's what we call the property panel, right? On the left-hand side is called the layers panel, which I'm going to talk about next time. But the properties panel is actually interesting. And this is where you see your design or your prototype, that is if you're prototyping something within your work and your inspect element, which you, developers could see, or you could show developers to see the properties you can use within your, within your design, right? And they could see this across CSS, iOS and Android. So if you really think about it, Figma is an amazing tool, an enabler that really helps the breakthrough within designs and, and all of that. And you could even change your color codes to from hex to RGB and things like that, right? So if we go back to the property design property panel, there's the alignment section here. There's the auto layout section here. There's the position um rotation and ro radius here so what this radius is it's the curve that comes within the edge of your shape or design right so we also have layer panel what do you want sort of like the behavior of your frame but well, i'm going to talk more about that just right you also have your transparency or the pass through is what they call it here um and then you, you also have where you can 
make the layer visible or not. You could do that here, or you could come to your um, layers panel and do that visibility here, right? And then there's also the fill section, right? So the fill section is what colors do you want your work to have? And you could change it from a solid color to probably linear. That is if you want to do a little bit of gradient, which I'm going to cover in the uh, in the comment video. You could do radial, you could do angular, you could do diamond. You could also fill it with an image, right? So it gives you a, a predefined template of an image here, right? So. That, those are those are and you could also add a property to the the kind of image uh the, to the kind of feel you want it to 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 be right so those are the um properties within a feel and there's also a stroke so what's a stroke a stroke is just like um a feel that comes at the edge of your work right so you could add a stroke you can make it inside right sorry you can make it inside right and like you can make it outside right and then you can center it so it means that it will be in between and it's, it will be in between the design and you can increase your stroke as you want right or you can make it independently right you can put it by the top right and increase the the the, the whole feel you could put it from the bottom and increase it you could put it from the left side or the right side right so these are basic things with Figma, right? That I'm just trying to um rush through and go through so that we could have just a basic video out. Um, and then within that, you could have the effect properties where there are drop shadows. So drop shadow is just like, a, I don't know how to explain drop shadow to be honest with you, but it's just like a shadow. Just think of it like a human shadow, right? But in, in terms of design, right? So you could have blows, you could have, you know, let me put it in the white background to explain a little bit more better. Um, you could increase opacity and things like that. Just a lot, a lot of things you could do with the whole shadow thing, right? So you could now export this box as an independent entity instead of like dicing it up if that is what you want to do. So you could export it. There are different export properties within it. So there's all the shapes follow the same prop or have the same properties within figma so for example if you don't want to do a rectangle and you want to do a line you could have a line from here to here right and to to, to draw your line you just click and hold and then drag it to the side so for example if you want to make it a perfect line you could hold your shift and it will anchor it to a, a, a specific like angles right and it does this 45 degrees at a time so i could want to say okay i want it 45 degrees towards the top i want it 45 degrees towards the bottom or i want it just straight towards the bottom right so there's a lot of things you could do with that and there outside of that you also have the ellipse so you could just draw the ellipse and just to make a perfect ellipse or a perfect circle what you're going to do is as you're drawing the circle you hold shift and alt within your keyboard right um it's the same control on mac and windows so it's shift and alt and you can drag it along your design right so outside of that we also have polygon which is <laughs> more or less like a triangle um you could decide how many shapes you want it to have just like a polygon right the minimum is three but you could have a lot more like you could play with i mean we're going to play with this with time um you could have a star and also like the polygon it also has how many sides you want it to have right and you could also pinch it inwards and outwards so there's a lot you could do with all this figma tool the image tool and you could just click it and bring in any picture you want from your device and then outside of that we have the pen tool and then the pen tool is used to just draw you know just definite um shapes that you want within your design right and you could play around with it you could add stroke to it you could add feel to it that's if you really do it right and we're definitely going to play around with it more with time right so outside of that we also have the pencil tool which you could use to draw, um, you know, like things within your design. I don't know, it's just more or less like a pencil. And if you have like a touch screen, it will really 
work well on, on just things like that. So we also have a text tool. So the text is used to create text within your design. And then you can just see, take the text tool, click anywhere within your design and type whatever you want to do, like how, right? Or like, let's say button, for example. Right, so there's a lot, a lot of things you can do with it. And then, you know, we have the pan tool or the hand tool, right? So you can use this to drag within your design or pan around within your design, right? And then we have the comment tool. So this comment tool is used to comment within a design. So you could use it and say, like, for example, you're collaborating with a team member and you could create a comment within your design and say something like this is a comment. Right, so there, there's, there are definitely a lot of useful tools within Figma, but these are the basic ones that I just run through. In the next video, I'll be, I'll be talking about how we can utilize all these things I talk about to create just like, you know, micro basic um, components within our designs or like, you know, like buttons or, because like I said, I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to create a video that makes it from a, a basic to what it is. I'm going to talk about pages. I'm going to talk about asset panel. Um, and I'm going to talk about just a few other things that I think are important for you to learn within Figma. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, catch you in the next one.